Hi there, I'm Black Pipe broadcasting out of the UK to my people then. This one is got to do with the way we live in the UK and the perception of how we live to those in Jamaica and how Jamaica view people who live in the UK or America and how they want to copy some of our lifestyles, which is at their detriment. Why do I say that? Because when you think about a lot of um, people in Jamaica and they say they feel poor and they don't have money to send their kids to school, well, not that they don't have money to send their kids to school. Sometimes their children will go to school without food and um, they, they, they're they poor. They don't have not, not enough food in their house to feed the family. And I was trying to think that, you know, sometimes when... Like when I went to Jamaica and I saw those guys buying butterfish and parrotfish, I can't even afford that in the UK, right? And a lot of times what the what people in Jamaica view as um, the food to eat is just costing too much money, like butter, like cornflakes. They don't need that. And all I'm saying is that sometimes, you know, a lot of people in Jamaica have the Western concept and they believe that what we have in the UK, Canada or America is better than what they have in Jamaica and it's not. You know, and the thing is what we want, like me as born in the UK with Jamaican parents, I love my Jamaican food but can I afford it in the UK? It's very expensive. So, you know, it's like Jamaicans are kind of coveting what we have and we're kind of coveting, well, those of us who love Jamaican food, kind of coveting what the Jamaicans have. And then you're spending a lot of money on our products and we're spending a lot of money on your products. Does that make sense? Does that make economic sense? I think what happens sometimes is that we're really losing the essence of what food is all about. I see some people doing shopping here in the UK. Their baskets are piled up high. And sometimes when you look at their, their food bill, it's all £189 on food that's going to go down the toilet in a couple of hours later. You know, you have to kind of think with spiritual sense and economic sense. What is the purpose of me eating this food? It's supposed to be to give your body sustenance. It's supposed to be to give your body protein and help you make, help maintain you and get you through the day. It's not supposed to be just because you like the taste of it, you must have it. And it costs you an arm and a leg because that is what we've got to. We've got to the point where we do not like basic staple. It's not good enough. And, you know, bully beef, that used to be the poor man's food. You know, it cost four pounds in the UK for one little dege dege tin four pounds that's nearly eight thousand how much is that in Jamaican dollars I wrote it down here somewhere 695 Jamaican dollars for a tin of bully beef now I wouldn't call that poor man's food you know if we want oxtail it's double that you know what I mean and it's not like you're getting a whole heap to feed a whole family you know and you have some left over you don't so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, when you are like if you're in Jamaica, you have to appreciate the way your parents and your grandparents taught you how to cook and how to make do with what you have. We are going to come across some serious times very soon. So you have to learn to appreciate the simple things like the flour, like the rice. You know, like the kidney beans, like the vegetables that you can pick, you know, that hardly cost you anything, and the chicken. And forget the elaborate stuff. That's not good for you anyway. It's just cholesterol butter. And it costs more than a dozen eggs and more than a chicken. So does that make economic sense to buy stuff just because it's international? And then you don't have nothing else to go with it. Does that make sense? So I think people in Jamaica, they have to really stop watching these American adverts. And you notice sometimes the way they advertise it, like sometimes you see this beef burger and you see the roll and then you see the nice big chunk 
of beef burger inside and you see the lettuce and you see the tomato and they make it look so pretty. What happens when you go to the shop and buy it? Does it look like that? Doesn't look nothing like that. So a lot of, you have to remember, a lot of these adverts and the way that they promote food is to make you spend your money, even if you don't want it. And half the time, it doesn't even taste good. This evening, I spent six quid on some fish and chips just because I thought, you know what, I can't be bothered to go home and make anything. Let me just pick up some fish and chips. It was bloody horrible. Six pounds. That six pounds could have got me a whole chicken. It could have got me a bag of potatoes. It could have got me onions, tomatoes, and it could have got me um, a, a bunch of bananas. That's six pound fifty. And I didn't even enjoy it. I didn't even enjoy it. I flung it mostly. I ate, the, I ate the fish and flung the chips in the bin. So, And that's what happens. You know, things look very, very nice visually. So you have to ask yourself, why am I buying this food? Am I buying it to impress somebody? Am I buying it because I want it? Is it because I, or am I buying it because I need it? Ask yourself that question when you're going into the grocery shop. Have a list. Don't sway from the list. I'm going to do a video after this. You know, you can buy a shopping for less than £50 in the UK. But that £50 is just for the first shopping. And then after that, it gets less and less because some, like if you buy a big bag of rice, you know, you don't have to buy it for the next three or four weeks. But you have to think about how can you cut down on your expenditure? Because I tell you, hard times are going to come and you need to know how to do that. Yes, we get used to living and eating what we like. We get used to it. But I tell you something, I can eat anything. Well, not anything, but I can eat, do most things. And it's about how you cook it and how you make it look nice. And if you're doing stuff from scratch... You know it's going to taste good. And plus, it lasts you two or three days. You know, on a Saturday, if I make a big, a big pot of soup, all I need is maybe a few bones or maybe chicken, chicken wing or chicken foot or whatever. And you put your, your dumplings in there and you put your vegetables in there and you put your lentils in there. And it's nutritious. And that can last me, one big pot can last me two or three days. And I can have that after work. So you don't have to spend a whole heap of money. But like I said, people follow fashion and they want to say, oh, you know, I've got cornflakes. I've got butter, anchor butter. You know, I've got bread, Warburton's or whatever kind of bread it is. And you have good, good Jamaican bread that's in Jamaica that's not going to cost you as much. So try to stop all this international buying and appreciate you're in a garden of Eden in Jamaica. Honestly, you're in a garden of Eden. Do you think we in the UK or even in America can go down to the sea and, 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 and get fish and take it home and fry it? And We can't do that. And you know how much it costs for fish over here? For even like, well, I don't buy butterfish or parrotfish. It's too expensive. I ain't out to impress anybody. If I buy a piece of bream or I might buy, um, you know, the red snapper or what else do I buy? Sometimes I buy the kingfish. You know, I buy that. But, you know, if I'm going to go and say I want to earn two or three um, butterfish or parrotfish, that's like a tenner, if not more. £10 or £12. That's not within my budget. And it's not because I can't afford it. It's because I refuse to spend that amount of money on, on something I can get so much more. I want value for my money. But a lot of people, they do it to show off. They do it to look bullshit. Why well, am I a butter fish? And, it's, and sometimes you get these men, me only, when they meet it, me only eat butter fish, you know. It's, if you can't give me parrot fish, me I want it. Fiesty. When you go to me out of sardine, they might eat, you know. And not quit in a tin. But them not eat. Them not eat um, ordinary fish. You have to get a butter fish and parrot fish. 
Who the hell do they think they are, love? Buy a tongue, come carrot come. And you better cook it too, because I ain't even cooking it. Because when you eat, when you cook that expensive fish and you don't cook it right, then I've something for say. So you have to, you know, you have to be wise. And don't buy food just to impress somebody. Because you know what? A lot of times we buy things, we spend our money, what we don't have, on things we don't need, from people we don't know, to impress people we don't know. Not really. And if they know you, you don't need to impress them. So you don't need to show off and, and go, boy, I'll get lobster. Really, really, truly. If you sat and really studied lobster, cracking all those bloody bones for your little piece of trash inside, is that really, it's a, it's a status thing. You see people eating oyster and, you know, they're, they're nearly choking on it. Why? To impress people. Who's impressed? So all I'm saying is get a bit more conscious, peeps. Think about how you're spending your money, what you're spending it on, why you're spending it. What did I write down here? Um, so I put, I live in England. I buy chicken wings and lentils to make some soup. And I use lamb bones. Sometimes I buy a little piece of liver and have it with green banana and a dumpling. I love porridge, so I can always have porridge. It's only sometimes, you know, I like cornmeal porridge, but it takes so bloody long. So sometimes I just have the oats. But you buy a big box of oats for one pound something. That can last you nearly a month. You don't need to be uh, spending all this money, man. Um, a tin of ackee. That's like four pound over here. That's like 900 Jamaican dollars for a tin of ackee. You know, and that's what how much we have to spend if we fancy to treat ourselves. That is a luxury. You know, the tin of Nestle's milk, that is a luxury. Bully beef now is a luxury. It's not something we can just go and buy. The only thing we can go and buy these days is probably chicken wing or chicken leg or chicken. Anyway, chicken, full stop. Chicken, you're fine with. It, it, it can last you, it's nutritious and it's relatively cheap. Oxtail. I love oxtail. That's six pound a keg. That's 1,000 Jamaican dollars if I want to have oxtail for dinner. So, what else have I got to say? And you know, the other day, um, I had threw some bread away and I forgot. I said, no, no, after, after I threw the bread away, I said I could have made some bread, bread pudding with it. Didn't even occur to me because I guess I'm not in that mindset at the moment. But you know, you can have your food and you can make it last. Now, instead of throwing that away because I didn't eat it and I've made bread pudding, that would mean I've got something to munch on at work or something for when I come home and have it with a cup of tea. All I need is a few fruits, fruits and you know, you always have your little piece of spices and stuff. I've got cinnamon and stuff like that. I could have made myself a bread pudding and had that to munch on. I didn't think, but gonna need to think sooner than later. We are going to need to think how we're spending our money and how we can conserve it and improvise and stop trying to impress people with what we have on our plate because nobody cares really. And like I said, a couple of hours, it's down the pan. So it's just like you're throwing away um, good money for bad. It's not worth it. Kitchen towels, you don't really need kitchen towels. You have your material, you have your material. You can just rinse it out. So those kitchen towels are expensive, you know. I saw one the other day, they're like four pounds for two kitchen towels. If you want the good ones, and it's no point getting the cheap ones because they just split. Same like toilet rolls. You can go and get toilet rolls. They put the, the big price, but it's cheap. When you go use it, it's just like two ply when you need four ply. So, you know what I mean? You have to kind of think about how best can I spend my money? And, you know, still live comfortable. I'm not telling you to live like a bloody miser. I'm just saying, think about what you're spending your money on. You can make bean stew, vegetable soup. All of those things are nutritious and they're good for your children. If you've got children, instead of um, crying poverty, just make some um, bean soup. Or get some, you know, use the chicken legs, use the bones and make some soup, which is nutritious. And stick some vegetables in there. That's all you need. You've got your skillion, 
you've got your thyme, a couple of Irish potato, need some dumpling. You've got a nutritious meal. What's wrong with that? That's the thing. You know, people have got so such a mindset that they look down on the food that they were born with. The one that our ancestors who survived, that is what they did. They made the most out of practically nothing. And that's why Jamaican food and other island food taste so good. Because we take the simplest of things and we season it up and we do what we can with it to make it taste good. I mean, even when you think about fish, saltfish fritters, actually, I think I'm going to make some tomorrow. Saltfish fritters, why? But you know the only thing with saltfish fritters when I make it? I stand up there, I make the saltfish fritters and I eat it same time. So even if I want some for later, it done by the time I finish each one, I'm scoffing it. So that don't work for me. That's not one of the foods that I can put down and say it's going to last me a couple of days. It won't. Um, what else? Yeah, you have to know how to make your food stretch, peeps. You know, when you think about rice, you can put anything with rice. And even if you don't, I'm not going to go with it. Make some gravy. You have to kind of be thinking ahead because I'll tell you something. The shit's going to hit the fan very soon for everybody. And if you're used to a rich palate, if you're used to a luxurious palate, if you're used to spoiling yourself, you're going to come down with a big bang. So you need to start thinking now, how can I improvise? How can I not spend so much money? It's ridiculous how much people spend in those supermarkets. Absolutely ridiculous. Do you really need everything you're buying? Think about it. You know, sometimes... I can spend um, 30 pounds. I can spend 10 pounds because sometimes I just need perishables. You know, our, you know, things like eggs and milk. And I can go a whole week without spending any money. Or, you know, if I've got my chicken and my few little main meats that I buy, you know, all I can think of, well, you know, man, let's just have it with some rice or... You know, eat it with, you know, with a, a, a couple of dumplings or something. I ain't fussy. And that way, you don't have, you know, when, when the shit hits the fan, you're not going to feel hard done by. You're not going to feel poor. Because that you, you're accustomed to moderating what you eat. I really want to eat a bit more healthily. I really want to eat more vegetables. But the only way I can do that is with soup. I'm not a vegetable person, but I can stick all the vegetables in soup and I drink it or whatever, whether or not you call drink it or eat it. It all depends how thick the lentils are, how thick, thick the lentils have made the soup. But, you know, I think soup is the best thing ever. I love soup. I could actually drink soup every single day. I could. And I guess it could get a bit boring. But yes, yeah, so um, what else? And pasta, I'm not really a pasta person, but pasta is so cheap. And so you need to get your pasta in, you know. And look at all the things you can do with pasta. You can get a tin of tuna, you can get them the Vienna sausages, and you can make your sauce. And you know, Jamaica, we know how to make our things them taste good, you know. The simplest of things we know how to make it taste good. So we don't need to be spending a whole heap of money. And especially you guys in Jamaica, you don't need to be spending a lot of money on food just to impress and compete with your next door neighbour. Then go buy a, bo um, a big box of cornflakes. You think, oh, well, I better get some. Otherwise, they're going to think I can't afford it. So what if you can't afford it? It don't matter. Just remember what else you can get with that box of cornflakes. Instead of getting that box of cornflakes, just think about what else you can get that is going to feed you better and last you longer and which is more practical. So, like I said, our ancestors were the masters of survival and knew how to make the most blandest of food taste good. You need to take a leaf out of their books. Yeah, so... Why spend hundreds on food? You're just going to send down the other way. It's just going to come out and they're not necessarily nutritious for your body. You need to know what you're putting in your body has protein, carbohydrates and fibre. And you can get that through pasta, lentils, rice, chicken and vegetables. 
and none of those cost a lot of money and yet all of them are good for you so while I'm saying babes whether or not you're poor is in the mind you're not poor at all and in Jamaica you don't have to go without food because like they I've always heard them say from you have flour and sugar you know starve get back that mentality it will take you a long way bye bye